creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you a DIY using one of my new favorite finds that I just recently found at the Dollar Tree and it is these wood planks by Crafter Square. It comes in a six pack. This is an amazing find. This is something that I've seen at Walmart in their crafting wood section for years now and I want to say that Walmart carries them for about $2.96 for a six pack. They are the exact same size because I had a couple left over from Walmart. So when I saw these at Dollar Tree, it was a must have because there are endless possibilities for DIYs using these. Today's DIY, I am making a decor piece for Allie's new room, which used to be Ray's old room. Since we're still hunkered down at home, I'm taking the opportunity to really kind of DIY some decor pieces for her room. And so I'm excited today to bring you a DIY using these. This is such a budget-friendly DIY. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you what I have in mind for today's DIY using these wood planks that you can get from the Dollar Tree that come in a six pack. Alrighty, so before we get started, I wanted to show you that you can buy these at Walmart and these are by Go Create. You're gonna pay a couple dollars more for them. Starting off, I'm gonna take these slats and I'm gonna offset them just a bit when I place them. And you can see just how I'm doing it. How offset you want them is really up to you. I started off by just using six, which was one pack. Later on, I ended up doing more, but we'll get to that when it comes. Using some of these thicker jumbo popsicle sticks, this is what I'm gonna use to hold these slats together. If you just kind of place them strategically, you can get them to cover each of the slats. The glue that I'll be using today is this Aileen's Tacky Glue that you can get from Dollar Tree. This is the glue in the gold bottle. I don't suggest using the clear gel glue. When it comes to wood, I haven't seen great results with that glue, but I have seen great results using the Aileen's glue in this gold bottle. Dollar Tree also has a wood glue, which works amazing too, but because this is what I have on hand, this is what I'm gonna go with. It really is just your preference. Once I've got these popsicle sticks put down into place, before it dries, I'm gonna put some magazines or books right on top just to add some weight, add some pressure, just to really get these to stay good and in place. So you can see here that I did add the two additional slats and I ended up adding them up at the top and I just used some of my scrap pieces of my jumbo popsicle sticks that I had actually in my trash can and made some use out of them. I'm happy with eight slats total. It's the length that I needed it to be. Now using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of white if you want to use an apple barrel mat, you can. You can use any color you want because this is your DIY. You're gonna get creative and you're gonna make it your own. I'm only gonna put one base coat of the white paint on because later on we will be adding a second coat. And so adding a second coat right now just isn't necessary because we're gonna take care of any parts that you might see through the paint after this first coat dries. I know that probably sounds really confusing, but trust me, you'll see when we get to it. Okay, so my base coat is good and dry, and like I said, it's okay if you can see through it because we're gonna remedy that here in a second. Using some of Apple Barrel's Tropic Orange and some of Waverly's Teal, you don't need much of this. What I put on these plates was a bit too much. A little is gonna go a long way because we're gonna use a watercolor technique and to do that this is where I apply the second coat of my white paint or whatever your base paint is because we need the base coat to be wet now I wanted to achieve like I said a watercolor look a creamy kind of clouded look and to do that this is a technique that I like to use and so once I've got that base coat down of the white again before it dries. I'm gonna put just a bit of my color on a new brush 
and you can see how I'm just lightly brushing it on. You want that feathered look, you want that light look. We're not going for full coverage here. And as you apply it, because that base coat is wet, it's gonna mix in and it's gonna give it a real nice look. And you can get a real even look on this paint if you just do longer strokes from side to side. And so you can see that that's how I'm doing it and you're gonna get a real nice outcome. So for this first set, I did the bottom slat. I'm gonna skip a slat in the center and using the teal, I'm gonna go on to the third slat and do the same thing, applying the white coat first and then adding the teal to get that watercolored soft brushed look. Once I've done the teal, I'm gonna skip another slat in between and I'm gonna go with the orange and I'm gonna repeat this process one more time with each of the colors. When you're applying your colored paint, if you happen to get some in areas that you didn't quite want it, don't try to fix it while it's wet. Just let your piece dry completely and once it's completely dry, just go back in with your white paint and you can cover it up with a light coat or two over those areas. Oh my word, I am loving these colors. They are so bright and vibrant and fun. This is going to look so cute in Allie's room. Now let's get to embellishing this. And to embellish it, I'm going to be using some of these stencils that I got at Walmart. These are by Waverly. These are stencils that I use often. I'm going to spell out the word love, as you can see. And for the letter O, I'm going to use this aluminum flower that I also had in my stash. And this is one that I got from Walmart. And once I've got my stencils placed, I'm going to go ahead and just hot glue this piece first. So that way I'm really going to keep the spacing of every other letter that I place. When placing your stencils, the best thing to do to keep them in place is just to use some painter's tape. You can take the painter's tape off and on and it's not going to peel up any of your paint that you have below it. And so it's an easy way to keep your stencils in place along with pressing on your stencils and putting some pressure on as you apply the paint like I'm doing here. The color that I'm using today is Elephant by Waverly and I'm using a sponge dapper to apply it. I have found that when you're working with stencils, you don't want to use a paintbrush because you will get more bleedage. Using a sponge dapper really is the best way to go and you don't want to put too much paint on your sponge because again, then you will get the bleedage. I'm gonna get bleedage anyway, but I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Now, I know what you're thinking about what looks like a one at the top, but it really isn't. I promise you, I'm gonna fix that later. You'll see because I ended up not liking it. To fix the bleedage, you're gonna wanna wait again until your paint dries, and you don't wanna remove your stencil either until your paint dries. Once your paint is dry, you can go ahead and remove your stencil, and you'll see that I do have some slight bleedage, but this is an easy fix, so don't worry about it. I know that that can be kind of a frustrating part of working with stencils, but there is a trick to the trade when it comes to crafting and working with stencils. That makes it a bit less frustrating. So you can see that these stencils have these gaps in the letters and that's not something that I'm real fond of. And so I like to go in and fill those in and make my letters whole. To fix that bleedage, if you just take your gray paint or whatever color paint it is that you used on your letters and you just kind of go over your letters kind of along that side edge and just straighten it out. You're kind of, I guess, making your letters a bit wider, even though you're not to an extent, I guess. And you can see just how easily you can clean up some of those uh, bleedage dots that are along the edges and it really doesn't take much time. It just takes a bit of a steady hand and a good small thin paintbrush. So I honestly was loving this, but I could not get past the fact that this looked like a one. And I am telling you, we all thought so, but it really wasn't. With the stencils, each letter came with a capital and a lowercase. And this was the lowercase that came with the L, which is super frustrating because it does look like a one. This was definitely something I couldn't live with. So I just decided to break out my sandpaper, go ahead and sand off the gray lettering. I knew that I was gonna have to redo these top three slats anyway, but it's not a big deal. 
this is part of DIYing. This stuff happens. This is the reality of it. Sometimes this is what I go through when I'm DIYing for you all. And I don't always show it, but I want you to know that it does happen and it's okay to fix your problem and to kind of undo what you did and redo it just a bit. And so just using some sandpaper, it's an easy fix. You can see here after I sanded it, I did go through the three layers of paint. You just wanna wipe off that, all of that, I guess, dust and whatnot. And you can see that I'm just gonna have to repaint just a bit of this, but I'm not gonna repaint the whole thing. I'm just gonna do a patchwork. I went ahead and covered it with white first and then went back in with the teal and the orange on top and look at that. The one slat is a bit darker, but it is still wet in all honesty. And this was the outcome of it. I think the capital L, even though it's a bit bigger, it looks way better than the lowercase one that looked like a one. And now I'm happy with this sign. To hang this sign up, I am just going to be using my go-to method of using some twine. If you just tie the ends of your twine and make it two or three, I guess, strands thick and then hot glue it to the back and you really want to be generous with your glue, really just glob it on there and let it dry. It's an easy, inexpensive, budget-friendly way to add a hanger to one of your DIY signs that you're making using items that you have in your stash. I am so happy with the way this came out. What a fun, easy DIY wall decor plaque using these new slats that you can get at the Dollar Tree by Crafter Square. And if you can't find them at the Dollar Tree, you can find them at Walmart in the crafting section. I think that this is one of those signs that could be done to suit any decor. And I just love that I was able to do this for Allie while I was staying at home, even though her room transformation is a little bit on hold, on pause for the time being, I was still able to make her some really fun pieces to add to her room when it's time to get going again. I think that this was such a fun DIY, and yes, there were a few bumps that I hit in the road, but they were ones that I remedied. And you know what, really that is what DIYing is. I like to show you what I go through when I am creating these because it isn't always perfect. It doesn't always come out the way I imagine it, but I just kind of stick with it, work with it, redo what I need to redo, and in this case, the end result, I'm happy with. I think it looks much better with the larger L, with the capital L, than the lowercase that looked like a one. Glad I fixed that. I tried to leave it and Allie was like, why is there a one there? Yeah, because I used the lowercase L and that was the real one. It wasn't a one. I don't know. Anywho, I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY using the new wood slats by Crafter Square that you can find at the Dollar Tree. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. And bye for now, everybody. Stay safe and healthy.